Right, I know it's getting a bit like Groundhog Day this, but here we go again. And I'm going to take it up that steep hill out the village called Tabor Hill. And uh, I really hope that we're not going to have that horrible snatching, clunking from the chain and the gearbox sprocket now because I've really run out of ideas at this point. The gearbox has been apart twice. God knows how many times I've been over all the other things. Let's see what we get. I've had to go up and down the lane and it seemed alright. The clunking in the gearbox is gone. That was a broken tooth on the lay shaft here. camera by the time we get going. I've got a plan B actually. We might go to the left. We don't get a gap shortly. Uh, it's alright, we can go now. Finally.
hard up the hill there and everything seems fine. Thankfully. No sign of the dreaded snatch or jump there. I've got further thoughts on uh, what might have been aggravating that situation, which I'll discuss in a separate video, I think. Yeah, I'll give it away as much room as you will, mate. You really sort of think that, uh, you know, get out of my way, I'm bigger than you. And what goes on in their heads, don't you? Do they automatically cower when they see a lorry coming towards them, or what? Anyway, this appears to be really good news. And that awful clattering has gone. That was that broken tooth on the late shaft gear. Late shaft top gear, I believe. The one on the end of the late shaft, closest to the gearbox rocket. The one that meshes with the sleeve gear that carries the gearbox rocket. And I noticed that the knocking, I marked the tooth with paint on the gearbox sprocket, turned the back wheel to turn the sprocket in neutral, and in gear with the clutch in, and the clonk, I thought the clonk might happen with every rotation of the gearbox sprocket, but it didn't. It was happening more rapidly than that, probably about four clonks to three rotations of the gearbox sprocket, which suggested to me it was something on the late shaft, and to do with that late shaft gear, and sure enough, we had a missing tooth. So if you get a Triumph, certainly and possibly other machines too similar, like the SAs maybe, but I've had it before on the Triumph 650, where if you get a clunk like that as you spin the wheel in neutral, it's quite likely to be a broken tooth on the gear. Sort of 
trials and sort of riding, I think it'd be in first and second gear most of the time. Certainly hasn't got the stamina that the uh, bullet green laner has got, or even the Tiger Cup trials for that matter. Just got to keep it on the boil. But um, that could be fun. It rides well, the suspension is good. The brakes sort of do a bit. And it, uh, <laughs> in spite of it being such a lasher, at least to begin with, it actually sort of handles quite well too. Although, I don't often have issues with the handling of bikes. I usually sort of feel quite at home on pretty much anything. So I might not be the man to sort of say that the suspension needs this or the rake or trail needs that or whatever. I've never actually got into rake or trail. I know that's something to do with how far out the inputs and angles and forks stick out that. I don't know much else about it other than that, actually. So this is uh, running well, running smoothly. Got a bit of zip in it as well, nice. <laughs> well, that's what it's like when you go into a tram line. Ask him.
the best way to do that today, I think. But still, not convinced that this isn't just a 350. It's quite zippy. Ride it like it's a two stroke. We're going to have a bonus trade. <laughs> 